okay, so why have we created this handlebar stuff? You know, it was working just fine with our static public file, just using regular Express. Why do we need handlebars? Well, we're going to create a stock market app, right? And what it's going to do is it's going to use a third-party API to pull stock market data into our app. And then we want to do stuff with that data and output it on the screen. That's dynamic. That's dynamic content. And we need an engine that will work with dynamic content that we can pass variables and things from the back end to the front end and output it on the screen. And that's why we want to use handlebars. So I'll just show you really quickly how we can do that. We can come over to our route right here. We can put a comma and then we could just put open and close squiggly brackets. I'm going to hit enter and put this on another line. Now we can pass stuff into our app right here. So if I create a, a variable called stuff, I could say this is stuff, right? If we save this and now head back over to our home.handlebars, we can output that on the screen using double curly brackets and then just reference it, stuff, right? So save this. Actually, I want to wrap this in a P tag just because it's good practices HTML wise. Okay, so where are we getting this stuff? From right here. This is a variable we created. This is what is in that variable. If we save all this, come back and hit reload, boom, this is stuff. We've passed a variable from our back end to our front end using handlebars. And that's huge. That allows us to do just about anything. Now we can pass all kinds of stuff. Like we can come up here, I could go uh, const uh, other stuff equals hello there. This is other stuff. Right? So I've created a variable. I could take this variable and I could pass it into the page just by changing this to that, right? So now stuff on the web page will equal other stuff, which is this. So if this works, it'll say, hello there, this is other stuff. So let's save this, come back to our page, hit reload, boom, hello there, this is other stuff. So we can pass you know, strings of text, we can pass other variables like we just did here, we can pass arrays, we can pass functions, we can pass objects, anything you want, we can pass into our home page or to our web page through the back end like that, just that easily just by declaring it on our index.js page, creating a variable name, in this case stuff, and then just referencing it referencing it inside of these squiggly brackets anywhere on our home page. So that is hugely powerful and allows us to do anything we want. We can connect to any API in the world and output its stuff onto our screens, onto our web pages, just like this. So we now have everything we need to sort of build out our app. We need to now connect to our API and start to look into that. Before we do that though, I wanna talk a little bit about version control, Git and Git bash. We have some code now, you know, we're a little bit along in our project here and we actually have you know, a, a little bit of code here. So I'll show you how to save your code using version control. And we'll look at that in the next video.